Hi everyone, this is Sarah and James with The Full Life. It's uh, Monday, so today we're going to talk about educational things, things that enhance the mind. Um, in particular, we're going to talk about books and our some of our favorite books we have here um, that we're going to just kind of go through. And if you're interested in any of them, they'll uh, take a look. Okay? Do you want to start first or should I? All right, I'll start. So my stack is a little bit different than her stack because my stack is books that had a major impact on my life uh, at various like stages of my life. So we're going to start right off the bat in third grade with uh, My Teacher is an Alien. Um, the sequel to this book is My Teacher Shrank My Brains or Stole My Brains or something like that. Uh, and these are by Bruce Coville. Um, if you grew up in the 80s and 90s, you're going to know exactly who this is. This book is great. It was read to me. Oh my goodness, it like totally changed my perspective on life. Uh, the next big book that had impact is uh, A Wrinkle in Time. Uh, it was required reading in fourth grade. Again, the teacher read it to us. Oh my goodness. Like, this book gave me all that I ever needed to know for content on writing dystopian fiction. And it wasn't really dystopian fiction, it was more science fiction -y, but man, it was so cool. With a planet that was all about doing exactly everything the same, everybody looks the same, and anybody who's unique or odd or different gets put away and gets re-educated. Excellent book for kids. It's, again, a series by Madeline, I always mispronounce her name, Madeline Lingle, Madeline Lingle, Madeline Ingle. Um, all I know is that she was super cool. Um, then... When I actually started to learn how to read, like read well, uh, the first book that really jumped out was Sphere by Michael Crichton. And this is the actual book. Like, it is disgusting. Like, it has bugs in it. And, yeah, it's got dust on it. And it smells. And it smells. And I have read this book so many times. I'm pretty sure, like, rats ate on it because I found it uh, on my last trip home in, like, a box in, like, a storage place. Um... But man, I love this book. If you just need a quick synopsis, uh, it's got everything that I like personally. It's got underwater divers. It's got isolation. It's got big giant squid or octopus. I don't know one of the two eating people. Um, and it's about a spaceship they find underwater that's hundreds, maybe thousands of years old. And that's all I'm going to tell you about that one. Or you can just watch the movie. No, don't watch the movie. <laughs> The movie is horrible. I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Dustin Hoffman, I love Samuel L. Jackson, uh, but, but the movie's horrible. I don't know how to describe it. It's a horrible movie. That's all I've done. Uh, I've watched the movie. Okay, next, we get a little bit older. High school, 8th grade, high school, 7th grade, sometime in there. The Hobbit by J.R.R. Tolkien. I read The Hobbit, and I jumped right into the Lord of the Rings trilogy. Good one. Uh, epic book. It made me want to be a hobbit. I don't know why. Uh, but everybody like I know wanted to be Aragon, somebody cool like that, but I just wanted to be the Hobbit because I thought he was sneaky and cool. Uh, oh, high school. I don't even know how to pronounce his name, um, so I'm not even going to butcher it, but my favorite scientist slash author, um, I don't know if you can see him, Miki Akaku, I, he's probably listening to this someday on YouTube, and he's going to be like, man, you totally butchered my name. Uh, his, his groundbreaking work, Hyperspace, uh, the name kind of speaks for itself. It's about hyperspace. Uh, he's written tons of books, uh, like parallel universes, and he's even got a book called, like, I can't remember the name of it, but it's about modern types of physics and if it would be possible. Physics of the impossible, that's what it's called. And whether or not, like, we could time travel or have spaceships with force fields, and he explains the likelihood of each. Oh, my goodness. If you want to talk about science and you want to get your kids, for example, interested in science, read this book. All right, and lastly, uh, Aragon by Christopher Paolini. Uh, this is actually my signed hardback copy. Um, Christopher was nice enough to sign this copy after doing a radio interview on my radio show. Um, this book is amazing. The series it goes with, The Inheritance Cycle, is amazing. And Christopher Paolini uh, actually inspired me in my journey to become an author. Uh, he was one of many. Stephen King would be another. Uh, but he inspired me in a way that's a little bit different than Stephen King, who inspired my writing style and inspired kind of, or at least trained me in a sense by reading his books 
and reading his book On Writing by Stephen King. But Christopher Paolini kind of did something a little bit different. I was more inspired by him as an author, as a person. Uh, here was this young kid who had written this book and you know, had done it at a young age and didn't let anything stand in his way and became a huge success story. And one of my biggest things, biggest fears about writing was just writing, you know, acceptance and things like that. And so he inspired me to write no matter what. And uh, so, again, Aragon by Christopher Paulini. And don't watch the movie. Don't watch the movie. One. Again, yeah, for yeah. the movie. Well, I have a different take. I have four books, and these are books that I've either read recently or I've read that has actually led to some change in my life. Um, the first one is actually a sequel to The Life-Changing Magic of Tidying Up by Marie Kondo. It's called Spark Joy. And this is like her practical, how do you tidy up book, which is nice because I need practical. I'm a practical girl. Um, like I need to know how to pack baskets and fold clothes and um, the practical part of being a min minimalist and tidying up. And I'd have to say her books have helped me get rid of a lot of things, um, and, but there's a lot more to go. Uh, guys, if your wife picks up any of these books by this lady, <laughs> kiss that holy shirt from high school to college goodbye. Yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, so I would recommend this one. Read the first book first, The Life um, Changing Magic of Tidying Up, and then go on to the practical book, Spark Joy. That's good. The next book that I liked uh, most recently is How People Change by uh, Timothy Lane and Paul Tripp. And I actually picked this up on James's bookshelf as we were packing one day um, on in a, as we were moving from Alaska. And if, if you're like me, you've always wondered how, how do you change and how do you change for good instead of just always going back. Because uh, you can always change your behavior, but it's hard to have a lasting change in your life. Um, so this book is really good. It describes why people can't change, how you can change. It's more of a spiritual aspect um, look at your life. Uh, so I would recommend that book if you're just curious how people change and what you can do. The next book is, oh my goodness, so amazing. The China Study. So I learned about this book from uh, some family members in, uh, th that I have, they were mentioning the China study, in particular if you're interested in a vegan or a vegetarian life. Uh, this book is basically a, mm, a nutrition study done by uh, T. Colin Campbell that is just very fascinating. It's very simple but yet very profound. Um, and it talks about the relationship between diet and disease because, my goodness, there is a relationship. So, read that book if you're curious at all. And then the last one, it may be a little controversial, but I wanted to um, present it because it's something I recently read that was very helpful. With our daughter's uh, birth, we I felt very concerned about her health and protecting her and I am definitely a person who wants to be informed. I want to be an informed healthcare provider. I want to be an informed patient. And I felt like the information I knew about vaccines from school and from the typical resources just wasn't enough to make me feel good about vaccines. And not that we're anti-vaccine or pro-vaccine. I know there's a huge controversy about vaccines in general, um, but I found this book by Paul Thomas, who's a pediatrician, and Jennifer Margulis, who's a biochemist, and it not just talks about vaccines, but it talks about how to be healthy, how to um, just reduce toxicity in your life, how to get through childhood with your children, and I like the vaccine plan that they presented. All right, so those are a few of our favorite books that we wanted to share with you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below uh, the video, and we hope you enjoyed. Please follow along and subscribe to our channel as we seek to live a full life. See you later.